Hello, good morning. Hi everybody, it is I, Hannah Rohama, the Kombucha Mama, coming to you live from Instagram or wherever you might be watching this once it's uh, not live anymore. I'm really excited for the guests that I have here today and um, we're gonna be talking all about lots of fermentation things plus how you can get really educated. Um, like if you're passionate about fermentation, whether that's as a um, hobby or as a business opportunity, um, or even writing a book. We're going to be talking about lots of great things today with my guests. I'm going to adjust these blinds a little bit. All right. <laughs> I think that looks a little better. Um, but yes, I'm super excited. In this Thanksgiving edition, we are going to be giving thanks to all the microbes that do their magic and make us feel so amazing. And so, um, I am going to be bringing together my guests today very shortly, but I am super excited that you're here. What are you guys doing for the holiday? Are you preparing any special fermented goodies? Some cranberry chutney, some beet kvass, a special sauerkraut. What are you doing to bring more microbes to your table, more flavor, more excitement, if you will? Do you have a special kombucha flavor or jun flavor? Definitely drop us a comment and let us know how you are celebrating the holiday. In fact, Kombucha Camp has pulled together a really great recipe guide for the holidays. You can find the link in our bio. So if you need some inspiration and want to add a little more microbial magic to your table, uh, go ahead and grab that link out of our bio. We'll be happy to share some really great recipes with you. Um, I am very excited because uh, we are going to have family coming, which is nice. Obviously, last year we were flying solo, and so it's nice to be able to welcome family again to our home. Um, so I hope that you are getting a chance to do that, whether that's in person or virtual, <laughs> that you are able to give thanks with the people who you care about most. And, you know, I'd be remiss if I didn't mention that. In fact, the Thanksgiving, while it is a um, warm family holiday for a lot of us, it um, especially for Native American tribes, it's also a day of, of remembering that Thanksgiving wasn't such a happy occasion for them. And I think when we acknowledge the history of um, where we're at, we are paying homage and honor to those who got the short end of the stick, to say the least. Um, <laughs> so... Uh, that said, I want to honor the fact that I'm on Chumash and Tongva land here in um, Southern California and really grateful to be here. So I'm going to go ahead and bring um, Fermentation School on board. Let's get them in here. Oh, here we go. <sighs> Hello. Good morning. That is... Good morning. A beautiful necklace. That's something. A lot of work. Thank you. <laughs> For somebody. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Um, uh, a dear friend goes to the Amazon and works with tribes there. And I was grateful to support her work by purchasing one of these beautiful necklaces. And um, and um, I think maybe Meredith will be joining us as well. Is that right? Um, well, we were trying to figure out how to both be on the fermentation school account. Um, Oh, interesting. Sure. And uh, we can't both be on the live at the same moment. I think she's in the, in the. I think if Meredith, you go ahead. Here we go. You've got requested to join. I think I can bring all three of us together. Uh, Let's see how this goes. You know more about this than we do. <laughs> <laughs> I, I like to pretend I do at least. Let's see if we get a trifecta here. That would be really cool. But so nice to see you, Kirsten. How's everything going? It's going great. I just was on um, vacation for a week with my whole family. First time everybody was together since the pandemic. And we got locked up in a cabin by a lake. Literally, uh, landslides kept us from getting out. So we were, and we all got along. So were you in Canada? Oh, wow. Uh, the Olympic Peninsula up in um, Olympic National Park. So Washington National Park without any is surreal. Wow. Well, hey, I'm so glad you got a chance to gather even ahead of the holiday. And of course, welcome, Meredith. Hey. So good to have you. How's it going, Hannah? Hi. 
Great. How are you? Good. Just figuring out this Instagram live business. Um, but it's good to see your totally. face. <laughs> hey, everybody. Well, I'm so honored to have both of you amazing women here today. You are accomplished authors, award-winning authors. You are um, foundational. You're really bringing the community together with the fermentation school. So first, I just sort of wanted to go over how we all met. Um, uh, I believe the first time I met Kirsten, wait, was it at the, um, was it at Mother Earth News Fair or was it at the Createcation? Yeah, it was at that in, uh, in Ventura. Craftcation, that was it, Craftcation, yes. You were just writing your book and I think uh, Fermented Vegetables had just come out and story publishing, they're like, oh, you should meet because you're both story authors. <laughs> Yes, and then Meredith, I think we met Ava um, at uh, Mother Earth News Fair yep. when our book came out in 2016. I think so. I don't remember which one it was, but that sounds right to me. Yes. Well, tell us a little bit about um, your book. So first, uh, Kirsten, you just mentioned Fermented Vegetables, which is a seminal work from a, what, a apricot to zucchini. <laughs> Um, maybe not apricot, but uh, you guys ferment all the things in that book. Plus, you've had several other books come out. Share a little bit about what you've written. Uh, yeah, I am um, lots of lacto fermentation vegetable books with um, fermented vegetables, fiery ferments, and then went to uh, grains and beans, took me to a whole nother place with microbes uh, using uh, subtilis bacillus. And um, Ooh. did you go on mute? Yeah, I can't hear you, Kirsten. Maybe she's getting a phone call. Sometimes that knocks the sound out. Hmm. Hello. I can't hear you. <laughs> oh, yeah. well, now you're back. <laughs> I saw your mouse, and I was like, I wonder. <laughs> <laughs> lots, of, lots of books five books from five books right that's amazing what an accomplishment five books in three years five years i mean 2014 so we're we're rounding the 10 like slowly mm -hmm. <laughs> amazing very good congratulations and then meredith you're also an accomplished author award-winning author most recently tell us a little bit about what you've been up to Thanks, y'all. Yeah, um, I've written the Ethical Meat Handbook, which just won the IACP Cookbook Award, and a book called Pure Charcuterie. So I'm, while I'm a fermenter of many things, I have like been existing in the meat world um, within the fermentation conversation. So that's what I'm bringing. Um, yeah. Excited well, I think a lot of people here. don't Excited even realize to that fermentation meat with y'all. Totally glad you're here. Sorry. Um, yeah, so I was just saying, I don't think a lot of people realize that meat is fermented. Um, so just share a little bit about that process. I'm, you're also an accomplished butcher and, um, and teach extensively on those topics. Uh-oh. I know, right? We're having fun here. <laughs> this is the joy of live. You have no idea what's going to happen. Well, since... Um, when Meredith catches up with the internet, uh, well, how about you, Kirsten? Obviously, you guys, you started fermenting because you were a farmer, or are you still a farmer? How would you characterize that? Um, you know, I think I was a, a homesteader, passionate about um, good food, and fermentation, first and foremost, is preservation. And so I stepped into it when there wasn't um, a fermentation conversation the way it is now. We weren't using the word fermentation in everything. I mean, we knew wine was fermented and beef and whatnot. But I started as a cheesemaker, dairy animals, and taught myself, like, pre-internet, pre, pre all the wonderful how-to books that are out there now. Um, and a lot of that was just honestly based off of wanting my kids to know where their food came from. <laughs> so they were making yeah, we, well. <laughs> it wasn't well, you were a homesteader slash homeschooler long before those terms were even kind of uh, popularized. Yeah, I was ahead um, of my time. <laughs> <laughs> yes, absolutely. I'm gonna um, bring Meredith back in. 
But I, what I loved about your, your story is that it just, it organically grew out of this desire to, as you said, connect your family with understanding food systems and food pathways, which I think is something that, you know, a lot of us, as we, if you grew up in a city or you grew up not on the farm, you just assume, you know, your food comes in styrofoam packages and with plastic wrapped around it and you don't totally understand how it gets from an animal or a plant into the state in which you're you're eating it and so that's that and and as a butcher Meredith that's got to be even more informative in terms of understanding where food comes from and why we should why we should use all parts so um Kirsten and I were just talking a little bit about her genesis story how did you start um, digging into the the butchery and the fermentation world yourself. Can you guys hear me okay at this yep. point? We can hear yeah. you, yes. Okay, sorry. I was like, it, it was cutting in and out, and I think I just got kicked off. Apologies for the technical difficulties. Um, <clears throat> that's a great question, and because it's exactly my avenue into fermentation was exactly that, just like wanting to make best use of the whole carcass and under. And coming to an understanding that like realistically we make the best use of meat and animals and honor them the most if we incorporate some type of preservation into the practice because it's really not practical to just like eat everything fresh because it's so perishable um, and of course that's why fermentation of meat evolved right because people needed a way to keep that food really stable that really nutritive food super super stable and even more digestible and even more nutritious as we know from like garums and stuff like those things are really really intensely nutritious in like small complex bites um so i came into it just with this like curiosity of how can we honor the animal in the best way um and then realizing that charcuterie and all attendant sort of names for the process of meat preservation were were the avenue towards doing that and um, really kind of wanting to bring it out of this like gourmet category where like charcuterie is just this fancy food that we get at restaurants or that, you know, other people know how to do and really recognizing that it's something that people created, you know, in a scrappy way and it's super, it should be super accessible and it should be given back to the public really. Um, so that's kind of where you know, that curiosity and that desire just translated into me teaching myself how to do as many different things as I could from all over the world and learning from other people and, and just um, constantly learning. Yeah, well, learning seems to be a theme here. And of course, learning is also what has driven both of you to start fermentation school. So why don't you share a little bit about how that idea was hatched and came into being and, and uh, a little bit more about it? I'm going to say that like, like Meredith's story was a really organic um, where she is today with, with her work. And we were touching on my story also being like organic. Like I hadn't set out to become a fermentation author, for example, but here I am. Um, the fermentation school <laughs> is equally <laughs> an organic um, thing that happened. I mean, Meredith and I, I can remember in, in, um, you know, Mother Earth News Fairs, you know, having coffee together in the morning and just saying, what else do we do? How can we impact um, food systems or, or how can we impact in a, in a bigger way? Um, and we would have these big, deep conversations and then kind of shrug our shoulders and go off into the world. <laughs> and then the pandemic hit, right, Meredith? <laughs> and suddenly we were talking about, okay, well, we need to teaching how are we going to do that and we both started our own our own uh little platforms and we realized that there's just so much more power in community in together and lifting each other's voices and and um, from there i think we're both a little bit um idealistic we're both dreamers and i, I think we can see the potential of you know something really cool and big growing from from this space mm. yeah I'll just add to that like the whole thing about teaching fermentation like it ends up being this like hustle you know what I mean that it's not really it it shouldn't be like I don't want it to be sharing knowledge is it comes from a place that is for me like separate from 
like sales and marketing and the development of personal brand, you know, but I feel like in order to really spread the word about fermentation, like it necessitates this ridiculous like hustle and this individualism that is really like counter to what fermentation education is all about, you know? And so I think that for us, like developing the fermentation school and realizing that like, if we were all promoting each other, then a, like, that's how the online marketplace works is that like, you have to be, um, you have to remain relevant and you have to like constantly be pushing content, but to do that for yourself and like one personal brand is ridiculous and soul crushing, but to like do it for a group of people and for each person to be lifting everybody else, like that feels more genuine and authentic to who we are and what we're doing. And it also just like actually does like continue to renew the relevance of that one website that is trying to disseminate this information. Right. So how can we create a community that just by virtue of its like authentic desires is like going to be competitive? And so I think that's like, for me, that's what continually like renews my, like showing up to work in the morning, you know what I mean? And like making something like the fermentation school work as an engine for learning and like growing the community. Um, it seems to be working so far. It's growing pretty fast, um, but again, still a startup. So um, <laughs> yeah. Like, we'll see what happens. Right. Well, you've each had your own other businesses, whether that was um, selling produce or your goods at the farmer's market um, or teaching courses uh, in person. As you mentioned, the pandemic, of course, necessitated us to shift away from in-person learning and hands-on things more into this virtual space. And so it's in a way, it's given us an opportunity to accelerate um, shifting into these places, whereas before we might have just been content going to event to event and, and teaching a small group of people in person versus being able to leverage technology and, and have this broader platform. And so if you were to sort of the biggest vision for what this fermentation school could be, where, where do you see this going? Like, is this, is your student a home person? Is it someone who wants to start a business? Is it both? Like, how do you envision this platform bringing that community together? That's a great question. I mean, I really think the sky's the limit. Like one of the things we're trying to do is build a global community of really of women centered creators. And so it can be, we're bringing in people who are like, you know, trying to create um, a, like a business for themselves while they're parenting, for example, like this is a list struggle that a lot of women face is like, how can I be professional? How can I follow my passions while also being like a dedicated and an attentive parent? And fermentation is like one way for women to do that, whether they're educators or whether they're creating like a packaged good. Um, and so we do have like, we do have people on deck to be teaching about business creation. Um, and so there are you know, there is the potential for people to be coming in who are interested in business, but also like, I would say we have a huge audience of people who just want to enrich their own lives with like either skill building or more healthful foods. Um, as you know, Hannah, like tons of people that are realizing like how much they can reclaim their health and their joy through fermentation. And so I really see it as a place where for anybody, you know, like even if you come and you walk away and you never ferment anything else, but you gain like a deeper understanding of where food comes from and what people are doing to put like healthy food out into the world. I think it just like enriches your life even more to have that knowledge, whether or not you're going to like put it to use in your own kitchen. And so I think we're really just seeing like the gamut of people coming to the table um, and especially like people who want to support women. I think that's another thing is like people are seeing that like women have a harder time having their voices heard around the world, specifically like if they come from marginalized populations. And so the platform seeks to create like an opportunity and a way for those women to not only share their knowledge, but to get paid doing it. And so I think, um, you know, people are joining up just because they care about that mission. Exactly. And I think that, um, you know, traditionally, food has been the domain of women, not to say men didn't have a role in that as well. But it's so interesting to me how over time, <laughs> it seems like every area where women were traditionally the, the ones who did it, like men have become the most celebrated Amen. Uh, people in those Amen. fields. <laughs> I just <laughs> I don't understand it. Um, and so I love that putting female forward is is really part of the mission, because 
Um, and again, it's not to say there aren't wonderful, you know, male fermenters out there. And of course, they're our friends, they're part of our community. But, um, you know, having a place that is really putting uh, women front and center, I think, is is exciting uh, to create that kind of community. And it, it also just there's a different energy that comes from that. And it also, you know, as women, again, you know, I'm so conscientious, men are nurturers too, but right, that's a big part of who we are as women is caring for people and feeding them and making sure that they're taken care of. And fermentation is such a wonderful way to do that, as you said, for your own personal health, for the health of your family, and just to really understand where food comes from. And um, so I'm very excited about the platform and all the great uh, creators you brought together. Uh, Kirsten, why don't you share a little of your thoughts on this and then also like who are some of the amazing other teachers you brought together? Yeah, um, yeah, I agree with everything Meredith said. Um, a few months ago, we had um, we had a moment where we, we sort of announced that we are looking for instructors and I was, uh, I was so heartened by the responses we got and the, the, the women out there look to, like Meredith said, you know, they're a mom, they need to do something from home and they have this knowledge and they would like to find a way to help that, help their family, you know, for, for whatever reason. And, and so that was, that was a real aha moment for me to actually start hearing from these other women creators. Um, uh, and it, it, like Meredith said, that helps me wake up in the morning and say, oh yeah, what we're doing is, is good here. We're, you know, we're... but yeah, as far as other creators, we have, um, we just launched a class, from a woman in Mexico. It's our first um, Spanish class and her name is Sole and um, she is doing a class um, in Spanish about um, ferments like oxymels and things like that to keep your immune system healthy, to build your immune system over the winter months. And, and we're really, really excited about that class. And in doing so, we, we realized, okay, now we have to pivot to figure out, you know, how to figure out Spanish keywords. And, and there's just, you know, it's constantly learning. Um, we have a mindfulness mindfulness class uh, that launched recently, um, Julia did, uh, Julia Skinner at Root Kitchens. Um, we've got Hannah, we've got your kombucha class. Um, we've got, what else do we have? Claudia. Claudia, Claudia Claudia's class, also a addition. We've got Suins and Swats, our fermented traditionally fermented oats from Scotland, from Allison A. Um, yeah, and we've got so many folks like in the, in the pipeline somewhere. Yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yeah. Out their class still or about to launch it, or recording. And so that's, it's really exciting to see all these voices um, start to have a, you know, a place to, to share. Well, I'm confident that like a snowball is just going to keep attracting more and more um, teachers as, as well as students. And to Meredith's point earlier, like even if you don't make these at home, but you come and just learn how to do them and understand where food comes from or understand these traditional ways of preserving uh, foods or making them more nutritious, like that's huge. Um, we always think we have to do everything and we don't. Uh, we can we can just be learners and come and absorb that information and um, and maybe that leads us to apply it in a different way down the road. But it's just exciting to have this platform be brought together. But to your point, you know, <laughs> I've had an online business for over a decade, and it is a challenge. It is a challenge when you try to figure out the keywords. And now, what are the new social media ways that people are, are are shifting. It's gone from computer to mobile. And so being conscientious of how people interact with the information is also changing constantly. And so it's great to be able to come together and pool resources and information around that because there's so much structure and underpinning that goes to uh, this type of, of, of business that, you know, I think people are like, oh, I'll just start a course and do it on my own. And you certainly could. But I think there is that opportunity of shared 
um, resources, backlinking, connecting, promoting, right? Like, so it isn't just one uh, Instagram account. It's, you know, several Instagram accounts or, or social media accounts that are then spreading this knowledge far and wide. And um, so how has transitioning into becoming the holders of this space and this platform shifted your own um your own teaching, your own things. Are you finding you have to dedicate more time to holding this space or are you finding it's just sort of naturally uh, plugging into what you already do or just curious how that's, that's shifting your, your day? Hmm. Well, I mean, we definitely are putting a lot of time in, no, no lie. Um, <laughs> but it's really fulfilling, I would say, just like being in touch with all these women and helping them connect with each other, which we're constantly improving our ways of doing that, you know, like helping all of the women that we're working with then help each other if they have the time or it makes sense for them to make those connections. Um, and I mean, I think it changes, it changes my, I guess I would say it changes my offering of online education because I feel like when I was offering in-person, I still offer in-person classes. And one of the, the powerful things about in-person classes is that it, like I drop into community where people are and like watch them come together around these skills and figure out how they're going to use them in community indefinitely, you know? And like when I'm offering online classes, I feel like it's some of somewhat of an individualistic, like transactional type of, of space, you know? Um, but I would say like the fermentation school has made it to where like, I still get that community vibe and that community feeling from the offering of an online experience. Whereas like before when I was like, oh yeah, I'm just gonna make some classes and throw them online. Um, like I wasn't necessarily getting, like I couldn't really tell how people were using that in an interactive way. Um, and so I think that's changed for the better. Um, it just feels more fulfilling to me and feels more aligned with my like teaching goals. Yeah, and I'd have to say that, you know, like Meredith, you know, I'm still doing both as, as I can, you know, through the, through the pandemic and, and there's such very different spaces. But what I do love about having this online space, this online community is um, I have the opportunity to connect with people and reach people and share the classes that my, my colleagues are, are teaching as well um, to people that I may never be in their community. I may never, you know, be in that space. Mm -hmm. Now I can, I can reach them and I can have conversations with them. Um, and also like last night, I, you know, had a two hour Zoom class. Um, so it was live, but online and Zoom. And, and it was really great because as questions came up, you know, for it was Koji based. And so I was able to mention Meredith's Koji charcuterie class is that people can keep going. And so when you have a in-person class and you've only got, you know, one or two hours and then people really want more, it's really lovely to have more than just a book to say, well, you can buy my book to know more or now it's like, well, there's, there's books, there's online offerings, um, there's other teachers that are doing fantastic works in other subjects. Um, so you can really dive in wherever you want. So that's kind of nice. Just it, there's more to offer. I just want to say if anyone in the audience has any questions about having a fermentation business or teaching classes or just even a fermentation question, please feel free to drop those in the chat. We'll go ahead and answer those. There was a question earlier today, which was uh, from Liz. She's in uh, Ireland and she makes kombucha. She's got New Life Force. It's her kombucha brand. And she was asking, you know, how do you keep yourself going when you sort of, when the buzz, the excitement of starting a new business has sort of worn off and you're seeing declining sales? Like, how do you keep yourself engaged or, or, or going when you start to hit those lulls? Mm, that's a really awesome. great question. <laughs> awesome question. <laughs> well, I get really sad for like a day and go, what in the <laughs> heck am I doing with my life? But then generally what I end up doing is like turning my attention away from self, like is a huge 
is a huge always starter for me. When I go like, oh, I feel kind of lost. I'm not really sure what's going on with like my ferments or my ideation or my creation. And I'm feeling creatively sapped. If I go and I focus my energy out at other people and like listen or read, like listen to a podcast, read something that someone else has created, ingest something that somebody else has created and like watch them and all of their beauty, right? And this is another thing that Fermentation School has done for me. Like, like if I'm like not necessarily like posting online or like doing something myself or even working in my kitchen, but I talk to Nishka in Puerto Rico who's making a kimchi with green papaya, I'm like, oh my God, that's so freaking awesome. Like, thank you. It's like a gift, right? Like their success and their amazing creativity is like juice, you know what I mean, for me. And so I feel like what I would say is just like, just take the focus off of like your business yourself and just know that like it is going to be there and it is going to be fine. And just like look out and get inspiration from other people in the world because that will always recharge you. I think that's great advice. Yeah. I just wanted to say like, exactly right. We have to consume. We can't, otherwise we starve ourselves. Right. And we're, we're feeling so lost and uninspired, but that's because we're not allowing ourselves to take in something else. Um, Kirsten, how do you, how do you deal with that? Well, you know, I, I, a lot of the same, same kind of things. Again, it's getting out of my head. I actually physically, physically, get out to and I keep looking out here because when I'm in that space and and everything just feels like I I walk outside and I have um a huge hill behind the house and even just walking up that hill I mean obviously you know physical things that are happening you know I'm uh, out of breath cardio all those yeah. things <laughs> really trudging because it is a you know steep steep hill but then when I'm up there look down at my house and it looks tiny it's like it reminds me that all these that they're blowing up in my mind are are tiny like there's such a a bigger picture out there and I think that that's huge and if I really need it then I go and walk up bridge over there and then our house looks even smaller <laughs> what do you do well, I love that what because, do you do hannah um yes i will share what i do but for perspective is exactly what you were talking about kirsten it just reminds me of the Taoist and, and chinese painting where they would paint these beautiful mountains and streams and all the right feng shui and you would find a, a person in the painting who was so small just as that representative that we are just but a speck in this cosmic mosaic and and to your point meredith when like we're so self uh oh, me mine this blah, right we, we get too overwhelmed and so by shifting that perspective shifting that focus going out there i personally i go to the beach so i'm lucky i can jump on my bike i go to the ocean i've been doing this i go and i sing to the ocean and I, I sing to Pachamama and I say, channel your love through me and how can I show up and be of service to this beautiful planet? Uh, which brings me to the fact that you guys are a B Corp. And I love that right off the bat, you were wanting to put your values out front and center. I'm sure it was an easy decision to make, but, but talk a little bit about um, the B Corporation and why you think that's so important for fermentation school. Hmm. Well, I mean, B Corp is a corporation that puts like equal or greater emphasis on social benefit as to like shareholder benefit, right? Whereas like a typical corporation is like making decisions and acting in the interest of its shareholders. Like the fermentation school is making decisions and acting for the benefit of our mission, right? Which is to empower creators and amplify voices to empower learning and build culture. So the idea is that we're reculturing um, through the way that we educate, you know, as well as like the way that we preserve um, and that we are providing a platform for women to be heard and to get paid. I think that's like really, really important to me to just say over and over and over again, like fermenta fermentation educators are asked all the time to give their knowledge away for free, all the time. Like, oh, you'll get exposure. Oh, you'll get that. You'll go on this, my channel, whatever. 
and you'll you'll get to speak or whatever you'll be included blah blah blah, blah. and it's not that we aren't grateful for that but it's just like here we have this opportunity for you to do that and get paid <laughs> right and in a way that you can create a passive income source for you and so that that for me feels really really important like and game changing in this space because you know, we're, we are like providing a dedicated channel for that to happen. Um, so that's the, that's the importance to me of our mission, right? And why being a B Corp is, you know, I, I don't want to just attract people who want to pay money for classes. I want to attract people who want to pay money for us to help women film themselves, for us to help women share their stories and share their knowledge, specifically women who might have difficulty doing that. Um, you know, greater difficulty doing that than somebody who can just go to Amazon and buy a GoPro, right? So like for, by us having that social benefit mission, like I feel like we open up more opportunities for a community of female fermenters anywhere in the world. And subsequently opening that community for creators then opens that community for learners and people who want to hear the messages that they're sharing. Yes, all that. <laughs> and we, uh, we do, that's a really important piece what Meredith just said is being able to, you know, hopefully at some point really be able to either go there or um, have lending equipment that we can ship to people or, or just, you know, ways female creators get their, get their classes filmed. Um, and then the other thing is accessibility for the students. Um, it's really interesting because we have these conversations often because we really have two communities. Um, we have the creator community and we have the student community. And in a lot of places, those do come together, but there's other places where those needs are you know, very separate. And so we also have a fermentation education fund we offer scholarships, scholarships, and we want to be able to do that. Um, like thinking long term and way out there, something I'd love to see is I'd love to see a grant program. I'd love to see somebody in, you know, wherever say, I have a group of kids, you know, we have a, a schoolyard garden, we have no money for jars. Um, and cutting boards and bowls and salt, you know, could we have a hundred dollar grant to teach these kids, you know, fermentation? And I'd love to be able to have some kind of program like that. That is, that is way far down the road. Well, speaking of dreams, you know, um, my dreams as you, I'm also president and co-founder of Kombucha Brewers International, you know, one of my dreams is to go into underserved communities and teach people there how to do fermentation and how to start their own fermentation businesses, especially in places that are food deserts or don't have access to nutritious foods on a regular basis, whether that's, you know, partnering with urban farms and, and helping uh, urban farmers get their produce into the hands of fermenters who then can turn it into these nutrient dense foods that then create this community um, not just in terms of creating businesses, but also in terms of creating health and, and knitting these systems together so that we start to become less reliant on only, I mean, we've seen the distribution issues and the supply chain issues we're running into when everything is so centralized and we aren't able to meet the needs of those um, who are in areas that maybe don't have access to these same types of things on a regular basis. And so, um, you know, I'm right there with you in terms of, I feel like empowering communities to be able to ferment, whether that's at the school level, at the uh, producer level, at the, you know, it is so incredibly valuable and important. And this fermentation has been with human beings since the dawn of time. And it really provides this wonderful framework and fabric for everybody to show up in community in this tapestry and weave and knit these things together. I'm also a huge advocate of kombucha brands starting their own tap rooms because I really think that when you create a center where people can come together around fermentation, whether that's you know buying fermented foods and drinks just to have a good time, or now you can host speakers, now you've got yoga, now you're bringing in creators who are making other types of um, foods locally and bringing in the community, 
that especially in these in these times when we're feeling a lot of division, when there's a lot of tension in the media about, you know, what side are you on? We really need to be on the side of all humanity. And that's bringing people together and, and finding our commonalities. And the fact that we all want to not just survive, but thrive. And how do we how do we empower communities in order to do that for themselves so we aren't relying on external or centralized or, you know, just unsustainable food pathways that that lead to poorer health outcomes. So uh, I definitely am, am very passionate about that. And that's one of the things I love about fermentation school is that this is part of your ethos and mission as well. And, you know, we all have our sort of unique way into all of this. And yet all of those threads create that that beautiful tapestry of, of humanity. So I'm super excited to be partnered with uh, both of you women and all of the creators on the platform. And I know someone earlier was saying only women. And yes, at this point, that's exactly <laughs> what we're doing is we're bringing the voices of women to the forefront. Um, I can totally see this as like bringing traditional indigenous practices to the mainstream. Um, I I'd never heard of fermenting oats, and um, there's lots of things I haven't heard of in the fermentation world that I'm really excited to learn to be um, to get more information on. Simply because you're bringing all of these great things to your platform, so we're really excited about all that you're doing. And I know we're going to do. Um, was there anything else you wanted to share? Just sort of lessons learned. Uh, I know we're going to do a little giveaway. We'll talk about that in a minute. But just would love to hear any other thoughts you might have about fermentation school fermentation or your mission any of it yeah I would just address the women the only women question really quickly like I feel you know this is something that you know we've created because we really feel like women have a lot more to share than has been highlighted when it comes to fermentation and specifically you know like as you noted earlier Hannah like food has been you know the domain sort of of women for a very long time and i think also like food preservation like the spirituality of food preservation the technique of food preservation the traditions of, of food preservation have been women's work for a really really long time and so i think you know we do have a course with a male co-creator um, and we are open to courses with male co-creators, but I think if you if you are a male person or male identifying person who is considers yourself an expert in fermentation, we would urge you to come to us. But think about how you can work with a female identifying person in order to bring your knowledge to our platform, because there is undoubtedly a woman who has influenced your work or who is. Um, attached to your work, um, it might be your mama, but somebody who you can bring to that table and and let her speak because chances are it will become a more powerful course, uh, become a more powerful course as a result um, of that powerful woman. Um, and so we are, you know, just really committed to having like, you know, the female centered leadership um, and ownership of, of the platform um, and feel pretty strongly about that. Not because we want to be exclusive, but because we want to be celebratory of what women bring to the space. Yeah, I love that. Thanks. Any last thoughts, Kirsten? I don't think so. I've been all over, all over the map this morning. I guess um, in and a uh, celebration of upcoming holiday madness. Um, who We do want people to think about giving the gift of knowledge, giving the gift of fermentation. Um, our classes are very giftable. Um, you can give them to somebody you love. You can give them to yourself um, <laughs> to make president, presents. Um, you know, and just just back to that empowerment and, a, and that knowledge sharing. You know, it's another way to think about and back to what Meredith said, this is the hard part, right? We want to share our knowledge, and yet we do have to, um, at the end of the day, make some kind of income. <laughs> well, and it's a fair exchange, to say the least. I mean, you know, once you're empowered with the information, you're, the only limit is your imagination. Um, and so this, this is powerful information that's being shared. And all of the creators, of course, all creators deserve um, to to be uh, that exchange is valuable and whether we use currency in the form of money or currency in the form of other things it is still important at the end of the day your landlord 
or your mortgage or whatever all has to be paid in in currency and so um being able to to take that knowledge and turn it into something that's incredibly valuable for other people warrants that energy exchange uh, of money for your time and so absolutely especially if you are um last minute gifts these are great because they don't require any shipping there's no shipping delays there's no um, extra packaging it's incredibly sustainable you could not give a better gift than the gift of education knowledge um, and a skill set, and who knows, you might spark a passion in someone that puts them on a completely different path. I know when I met Kombucha, I had no idea I would end up as the Kombucha Mama or a president of a trade association or author of a book, and yet here this amazing life has emerged as a result of a chance meeting with an amazing ferment. And this could be your life. This could be your story, and maybe it's already your path, and you want that knowledge and information to take it to the next level. So um, in the spirit of giving, I know we're going to be giving away a course from Fermentation School. Please share some more details. Uh, we'll be sharing the giveaway tomorrow on our Instagram, but what is it that folks will be um, wanting to, to receive from Fermentation School? Um, yeah, I can uh, give away a course. Um, let's see. I'm trying to think. We didn't really talk about how does one enter that giveaway. <laughs> <laughs> well, so they'll be entering it by following us on Instagram. And then once we select the winner, they will then receive whatever the prize is. And so if it's a gift certificate that then they can apply to any course, if it's a specific course, we could then name that course. So whatever, whatever you think is going to be the best way for someone to enjoy the gift a fermentation from fermentation school. We are open to anything you like, but um, I think that'll probably be the easiest way is just give them a gift certificate and let them decide what course resonates with them. Um, what do you think, Meredith? Shall we well, do that? right now we don't have the functionality on our website to like apply like an outside gift card to just any class. Oh. So it is gonna have to be a specific course. Um, and you know, all the courses are, are giftable. Um, so I think we, you know, we probably just need to decide like what class it is, um, and then make the offer, but we weren't really prepared, sorry for this. So we don't really know like which class, like we can't just give away people's classes that are like, we could give away our classes, you know, but like, sure. we, you know, we can't give away like somebody else's class. So, um, we have to have permission. <laughs> Um, well, I'm, I'm open to giving away one of my courses. If you feel like that's a good solution here, I'm happy to do that. The Kombucha Fundamentals course, which is a 10 lengthy lessons uh, on going over everything about kombucha, or if you prefer one of your courses. So we'll, we'll get those details ironed out and share with everybody tomorrow. But um, uh, we're just grateful that you're willing to give uh, give this gift of education and knowledge to other people. So, so we know there's fermentation school in terms of Instagram, but if we wanted to find out more about um, Kirsten's books or Meredith's books, where would we go? Where, where would we find you guys online? Meredith is at um, Merrily Food um, Instagram. That's also what Meredith, MerrilyFood.com. Mm -hmm. And um, I'm Kirsten K. Shockey on Instagram or uh, ferment.works uh, online. But most of my efforts right now are at uh, thefermentationschool.com. Yeah, and I think it's um, also like to get on the Fermentation School's list, um, mailing list, we're going to be releasing a big promotion basically coming up here like in the next, what, two or three days, Kirsten. And so that's a good way to get in touch and save on gift classes or classes for your own. Well, yeah, so what self. is that promotion? I think we're participating. All will be revealed, Hannah. Um, oh, okay. Um, okay. It's a secret. Wednesday. Okay, so follow presentation. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, um, on Wednesday. So, so you got to be on the list to get the, the big surprise offer, which is coming on a Wednesday. And then again, sorry for the confusion on the giveaway, but we will definitely like work it out with Kombucha Camp and it'll be announced tomorrow. So maybe if you're listening right now, you get the double whammy of a giveaway and a big fat promotion. So um, Wondering that how will be the link is in, in our at fermentation school bio. Awesome. Great list. <laughs> the list. Uh, 
So definitely follow Fermentation School, sign up for their newsletter to stay in the loop on all the great promotions and stay tuned here to Kombucha Camp. We'll be sharing more details about the giveaway. As always, we're so grateful for everybody who showed up to enjoy this with us. And I'm really honored uh, to have had both Kirsten and Meredith here from Fermentation School. Thank you, amazing women. So grateful for all that you're doing for our community and to uplift women's voices. Um, really appreciate you. And everybody, uh, hope you have an amazing holiday. I hope there's something fermented on your table and that you are also sharing the gift of, of fermentation and microbes and magic and health and healing with those around you. So thank you so much for being here today. We really appreciate you. We'll see you next time on Mama Mondays. Thanks, Hannah. See you. Bye. Thank you. Bye. Bye.